good. In the PBR, you get ready for a wild ride. You have to bear down and cowboy up to stay on for the longest eight stay seconds on. in all the sports. Stay on him. In hunting, you don't expect things to come as fast and furious, except in Florida. All kind of hills gonna happen now. Here we go. Oh, there he is, there he is. Oh, oh, right oh. Right there. Damn, that's a good house. Bring it home today. Yeah. Absolute crazy mayhem. You know, I've seen a lot of really bad wrecks, but McKinnon's wreck was as bad a one as I've ever seen. I was in the arena in Anaheim, California when McKinnon took a good wreck. To be honest with you, it was a very scary moment for me. He took three good hits to the head. And when he laid on the ground, I honestly, I walked up and I looked down at him and, and I wasn't sure we were ever going to get to talk to McKinnon again. It was, it was scary. It was a bad, bad wreck. I mean, I think everyone that was there probably would agree that it was probably the worst wreck they've seen. His is one of those wrecks when the helmet comes off and then he took a hit after the helmet, you knew it was probably going to be bad. It, it just, uh, something you, you hate to see, but you know it's part of the game. That's boring. Stuff like that happens and uh, unfortunately, if you play this game, that's the risk you take. But even two weeks in a coma weren't enough to keep McKinnon off bulls. He's a tough guy, pulled through it. And here he is, showing the world what he's made of. It's this kind of gentle beauty about the place. Uh, the, the pastels, of the uh, water, the clouds, the sky, the tree line, the mangroves. But ultimately, it's a sinister place. Everything is out here trying to eat everything else. Let it go. And we're trying to catch it. There's a real battlefield quality about it. Beauty and struggle, life and death. We covered a lot of ground. Okay. Oh, come on. Huh. You didn't take it. Wow. Big time spooky. Sometimes they'd swim right over the fly and ignore it. What are you going to do? I lost them as soon as the light left us. You just have to keep experimenting when the fish are acting this oddly. Here they come. Look at the size of those tails. Whew. Now we immerse ourselves in an elemental contest with the sea. Hey! <laughs> Got it. All right. Black tips for us. That's a little lemon now. A lemon? Yeah. There's something quite magical about being out there and having the sharks run almost between your legs as they're circling these schools of bonefish. Oh no, guys. That's three big sharks right here. Too many sharks here. Bring the boat. I'm gonna have to center punch this guy. Get out of here. The dark side of the magic comes out as the bonefish scatter and the sharks start to target larger prey. This one, yes, he's... Yeah, he's got an attitude, that yeah. one. You gotta watch out for that one. Yeah, look, there's now there's more. They're trying to line up on us. Well, they see the mud and activity. and Two more up here. And they're all jazzed. And we're standing here right at about the wrong level. The perfect <laughs> shark attack depth. Hey there, buddy. That's a little close. Welcome back to the High Caliber Training Facility just outside of Memphis, Tennessee. We are spending this episode on their two and a half mile driving track learning how to become better behind the wheel. Now he's bumped us with the car. We just learned how to avoid an aggressive driver. But what happens when that aggressive driver, full of road rage, comes after you? Sid Jordan has a few maneuvers we should learn and practice. The J-turn, I can go into a uh, J-turn, reverse, if I have an open area behind me, and I just start backing up, all right? I'm breaking contact away from him. You are gone. Spotted a really nice six by six. It has some really long fronts and a really nice frame. And it's the one I think I want to go after. The story of Arizona's elk is one of extinction and return. Today, the population's at a record high, approaching 30,000 animals. You know, I was set up and I was very stable. I pulled the trigger. I felt great about the shot. But then the buck trotted off, and I thought, what just happened here? <laughs> uh, that should be a down deer. <laughs> My gut reaction when, when I saw the animal uh, uh, leave the area was that uh, either it wasn't a great shot or it was a miss, and I wanted to give it some time. There was no reason to rush in and push that animal, especially in this terrain where you can push them down into canyons and stuff and, and lose an animal.